But first, you know there's something going on when journalists turn on their own. An MSNBC reporter got an interview with Pennsylvania Senate candidate John Fetterman. That's significant because Fetterman recently suffered a stroke and admits to auditory processing issues like the ones that came up during the interview. I always thought I was pretty empathetic, uh, uh, emphatic. Uh, I think I was very, excuse me, empathetic. Uh, you know, that's an example of the stroke, empathetic. Yeah. I, I always thought I was very empathetic uh, before having a stroke. You'll note during the interview, Fetterman's looking at a computer screen. It provided closed captioning. And to be fair, NBC went to pains to explain the agreements that went into the interview. Fetterman's first interview in person rather than via video conferencing where he could use captioning. I sometimes will hear things in a way that's not perfectly clear. So I use captioning. So I'm able to see what you're saying on the, uh, in captioning and I'm able to respond to with the, the question. And that's the auditory processing. Yeah, that auditory processing where you know, I'll hear someone speaking, but sometimes I'll be able to be uh, precise on what exactly that they're saying. I use captioning. All that was fine until the NBC reporter Dasha Burns told the truth. She presented her story on NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt and at the end added this. In small talk before the interview, without captioning, it wasn't clear he was understanding our conversation. And then, kablawi. The media world blew up. How dare she offer an unfavorable explanation about a stroke survivor? Had she never heard of the American with Disabilities Act? She must be prejudiced against those who have had a stroke. Never mind, of course, he's a Senate candidate for the United States Senate, the world's most deliberative body. Never mind, debate and conversation is a huge part of being a senator and representing your state. The media couldn't believe a member of their tribe, of the media, of the media elite, would offer such a candid observation. It got so bad, Burns had to go on the Today Show this morning to defend herself. Since then, other journalists who have also dealt with Fetterman came forward and said they had a different experience. Yeah, and Savannah, that's completely fair that that was their experience. We can only report our own. I will say it's important to note that according to the campaign itself, our team was the first to be in the room with Fetterman for an interview rather than via remote video conference. Colby Hall is here, founding editor of Mediate, the premier website for news about the news and on balance resident philosopher. Uh, boy, uh, she gave her observation, which is what reporters do. And then I'll use, I'll use a turn of phrase, the media pounced. The, the media <laughs> pounced in much the way that we media criticizes Republicans for pouncing. Yeah, the reporter did a great job of reporting. I mean, she saw... Look, this was the first interview that uh, Fetterman had given in person since his stroke in May. So it was a big deal. And his recovery from his stroke or his mental acuity is the top story. And that's the thing that everyone cares most about because he's been laying low or been doing interviews with people remotely or via Zoom or what have you. So I thought that, uh, that uh, Burns did a terrific job with her report and was very open and transparent. I will argue that it's not the entire media that pounced. It's just the part of the media, which represents a lot of them, that are so wedded to their tribalism that they, they, they get their, their allegiance in way of the facts. And what she said and reported about Fetterman was entirely actually dispassionate and, and fact-based, but that wasn't enough for these people who had to blame her because it may hurt him in the election. Yeah, God forbid a journalist tell the truth. To your point, the tribalism is more important than the facts, which is supposed to be obviously the other way around. It brings up a really important point, though, about, about John Fetterman. Uh, he's running for the United States Senate, not for dog catcher, not for town council, not, not for some uh, random, you know, random office of, uh, you know, the mine commissioner uh, of Pennsylvania. Uh, this is important stuff, and yet he seems to be doing the same thing uh, that President Trump uh, was so criticized for, which is not revealing his medical records. Take a listen to him explaining that. Well, I, I feel like we have been very transparent in a lot of different ways. When our doctor has already given a letter saying that I'm able to serve 
and to, to be uh, running. And then I think there's, you can't be any more transparent than standing up on a stage with 3,000 people and having uh, a speech without a teleprompter and just being and putting everything and yourself out there like that. I think that's as transparent as everyone in Pennsylvania can, can see. <laughs> the media wasn't good enough with a letter for President Trump. Uh, why are they so, so okay with a letter for Fetterman? And more importantly, that talking about his health is, is the third rail. If you do it, you are somehow a, a bad person who isn't empathetic to those with disabilities. It's a great question. I mean, first of all, I want to say that, like, it's really brave of Fetterman to be recovering from a stroke yeah, in such fair. a public Very way. Fair. Like, it's unbelievable. And, you know, the media has always had sort of found him to be a darling because he's such a unique character. Like, he wears the hoodie, he's got the tats. He, like, he's, he's really good on TV, or he was really good on TV before he was, you know, surviving this stroke. Um, and that, that's what Fetterman was saying right there. Like, it's not easy. So, I, I, I mean, I think that there is some empathy but I do think the media's empathy is, is going over the board a little bit because his refusal to give medical records only hangs a lan lantern on it, to use a journalistic phrase. It only brings more attention to the fact that, like, oh, okay, so then what are you hiding? And, you know, it, but I, also there's been a lot of senators who've served till they're right. 100 years old. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. you know, you got Chuck Grassley, Diane so, Feinstein. Yeah, you no, know, ex exactly. If the public knows it, um, Right. I wanted to ask you about Alex Jones, but I don't think we're going to have time, so I'm going to, I'm going to go down this because we're, we've got the debate between Fetterman and Oz on News Nation coming up in, in about two weeks. They pushed it off as far as they could uh, once early voting was done. You are totally correct in how Biden and DeSantis would handle things after the hurricane. Your <laughs> prediction for how Dr. Oz handles Fetterman's health. When, when Fetterman stumbles, does Oz go in on it or does he step back? I think Oz is a doctor and will know how to be critical and diagnose and cut quick, but do it with a smile because he's a TV personality and I'm not sure that Fetterman will see it coming. So it will be, the answer is all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the good news. Uh, when we play the tape back uh, after the debate, you'll be right no matter what happens. That is a true <laughs> philosopher. There you go. Smart kid. All, all right, right we'll, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.